Well, now that I have both fields subsoiled, I can get to planting in them. So I'm going to need my cedar to get the oat in. Yep. Let me push that back into place. There we go. Now I'm, well, let me change it to oat. I'm going to need more than this. So I'm going to head to the store so I can get some more seeds. I think I will do the ridge marker instead of VCA. I think I have enough turnaround room with the small cedar that I don't need to really do the edges, but I will do them if it turns out to not be working out so well. I came to this side because I know it's 180 degrees, like I know it's on a cardinal direction. So I can just be on 180 degrees and have pretty easy-ish time making a straight line. And then it's a nice little tip. I don't know how it gets back out. Oh, okay, that's not a pull through. It's just dry docked. Okay. Makes much more sense now. I didn't, say, I didn't think that that sailboat, the sail and mast would get through the, back into the water, but I guess it doesn't need to. It is something that I find a little sad with bigger cedars and planters because the ridge markers don't work on most of them. I mean, they work, but they're not the right length. So you can just use it as a basis it, if it's the type that it puts a um, where you can put your tire on it instead of your nose. It's also something that in 19 they made it awkward because contracts, you couldn't use ridge markers because it counted as plowing and you couldn't plow on a sewing contract, obviously. I was excited to learn they did not make the same mistake. Kind of. Y you could use them. It didn't count as, it didn't say you couldn't do that on that type of mission. But they dug up stones. So, you know, still problems with it at the start of 22. But not the same problems that they had at the start of 19. Uh, even this one looks like it might be a little off. I'm going to... Let's see, this won't be the... the line that my VCA would have right now, but let's 
reset it. No, it did not reset. There we go. And then I'll see on the next one if it is set up so that it is, you know, one and a half meters. It probably is. Three meters is not very wide. Yeah, it's a little off, so, but that's actually all right. I'd rather be a little safe than not at all. Okay, let me reset that, just to make the lines go away quickly. It does make um, the sewing, the seeding and planting much easier even at the start of a farm sim game because you do have the lines before some kind of GPS mod comes out. You also do have to make sure you're lifting it and changing which which ridge marker is down though, otherwise you will dig up some of your seeds that you just planted on the row before. Well, I'm down to like 450 seeds, which would have been zero if I didn't go and get some more. And we're about halfway through the field. So I think this field is mostly one type of soil. I think there, it does change a little bit. Yeah, there's a little bit of sandy loam there. So it'll probably be a little more than 150 more seeds. I think loam is the the lowest seed use. Um, let me make sure I have the right yep yeah, the right ridge marker down. And by the right one, I mean the correct one because it's the left one that's down. Well, I'm getting close to the end of this field. Let's put down this ridge marker. You can see I am into the, what was it? Sandy loam. Yeah, sandy loam area. So my seed application rate has gone up. I don't know 
how much is left. I might not even want the the bridge marker down on this pass. But I guess it will let me know if I do need to get the full width at any point on the next pass. I might need to for the very end. <laughs> yep, not the full width at any point. So make sure they're both up. And I just have a little bit of this section. Oh, and I did... Oh, I don't think it dropped far enough. I think that's from the last pass. There must have been a... a bump. Or there... Actually, yeah, that's what it is. There wasn't enough of the cultivated texture to make that also be a cultivated texture so it took the plowed texture and turned it into the seeded on a plowed texture versus seeded on a well, stubble tillage texture so that should be all right it's got the seed lines in it Ooh, this does have too much nitrogen and I believe oats is one that cares about that. But, oh well. Yeah, the slurry is almost full here. And I do want to wait until April to move them to their pasture. So, I will have to take out the loan this month. To get a lagoon. But, oh, I have to take the tarp off. I have my potato planter out. Now, it does take quite a bit of potatoes, but I'm only, I'm gonna try two scoopfuls. See if, uh, yeah, I. See if 2,000 liters will get me through. I know that's enough base game to get half a hectare planted. And it's not that much bigger than half a hectare. You can't unload potatoes out of the planter, so I'd prefer to not have too much left over. You can also use regular seeds from the store, but even on easy economy, at least base game, there's more factors to think of with precision farming requiring more seeds. Well, actually, I don't, potatoes don't have variable, so it should be the same amount. But having um, higher prices if you have a good environmental score no base game, even on easy economy, it's more effective, cost effective to use last year's potatoes to plant your next crop. Unlike sugarcane, where you can get the special seeds for sugarcane, and I believe only hard difficulty, would it be worth using sugarcane to plant sugarcane? So let's do that. And get to putting potatoes in here. I love the look of potatoes just seeded.
What I will have to decide is quite how much of a loan I want because I need the lagoon. I'll need a little bit of a buffer so that I can keep up with the interest. Do I want to get the beehives and have to be paying more for them because I have a bigger loan? Or do I want to wait and not have the yield bonus possibly? It's another four, five months, another five months before I start making money on the cows. Besides the manure, which isn't a lot of money. I'm also not sure if the rotation, the crop rotation, will work all right with part of this field having a rotation. I guess I can look at, we'll probably say, growing potatoes, uh, crop rotation perfect. This is also crop rotation perfect, but it is, it is a different percent on the crop rotation. Like this is 110 when I'm in the potato section and 115 when I'm in the grass section. But I probably won't really know until I get to the canola part of the rotation. I might be able to tell a little better once the potatoes are taken out and then grass is put in.
Well, it's looking like I am most likely going to have to get some more potatoes. But not that many more. I don't have... I have one more... one full row left. Probably all together what would be about two rows, maybe even a little more than two rows, because it does widen out a little more. But I don't think I'm even going to get through this row. Nope. So let me go get, I definitely don't need a whole nother bucket. Just a couple hundred liters of potatoes. We'll see if 302 potato liters of potato is enough. And if it is, it'll still be more left for me to use than it would have been if I had filled the planter the first time. And just a sliver outside of this row. Which my potatoes should definitely stretch to there. And I think I'll go a little further just in case it like it visually looks like that is done after right there, but I'll just make sure it was actually done, and it was. So 144 liters of potatoes, so not, not much waste at all. So those two fields were all I needed to get done this month. Got my oats and my potatoes in. Now there are three fields I'm going to want to plant next month. And there's four fields of hay. Let me look at the weather. It's supposed to rain the rest of March. So I think maybe I would do one or maybe even two of the fields at the first stage of growth. So tomorrow's rain is, well the rain I can see is very early in the morning. So if the forecast doesn't call for rain all of it, I'm, I might still do one of the fields. And if I do, it would be field 83 because that's one of one of the cornfields I'd be doing next year, next year, next month. 81 won't be won't be a different crop until it's canola, which is July, August. So yeah, I might be able to do 83's hay thing this month and just get that 
get a lot of yield on it so that I have less to worry about next month when it's much busier. I should have enough hay for a while, especially because I changed the ages of the cows so they're not eating as much hay as they were when they were five months older. But the Let's see, it was 83. 80 is going to be corn again. And let me pull up my my calendar sheet. Three. Three is going to be soybeans. And all of those can be put in next month. They may... They could wait till May if next month gets too crazy. But if the forecast is right, it doesn't look like April's too bad. The first day is rain. Oh, and the last day. Yeah, it's worse than it looked. We, we will see the forecast. It, that's pretty far out, so forecast could be wrong. But that's all I was going to get done today. So I will see you all next time. when we're going to just try to get ahead so we have oh to rebut try to get ahead so that April isn't too crazy. <laughs>